Hi there, it's Richard here, Longshot King, and back with uh, selections for day two of the Cheltenham Festival. A good day yesterday, uh, Frutio Rooney, one of our each way selections, uh, managed to uh, grab fifth spot in the JLT, so we got a small return there. Uh, but later in the day, uh, one of our big priced each way selections, Ack Attack, uh, managed to finish second, very, very unlucky not to win, only fouled by a neck. And that returned at 66 to 1. So uh, a really good start to Cheltenham. So we're, we're showing a profit of 14.5 points. So uh, let's hope we can try and build on that a little bit more uh, today. So I'm just going to run through the races with you and, uh, and the selections for today. The first race we're going to look at is the, uh, the National Hunt Chase. Uh, I don't actually have a selection here. Uh, but I just wanted to point one out to you, just a little bit of interest, really, just something to watch. Uh, and it's this one here, present to you. Um, has been running, you know, a little bit in and out um, all season. As you can see here, it's got very, very low uh, handicap mark. So the price of 150 to 1 is correct, definitely. But this one looks as though it could improve for the step up in trip. It's It will be the first time over four miles. It has run a couple of times over three mile five and run uh, very well. And I just think that this one could be um, a little bit of a surprise package, even though, you know, it's got a very, very low handicap rating. So just one to watch, uh, but it's a no bet race um, for me on this one. Uh, let's take a look at the next race. Okay, next we've got the Neptune Investment Novices Hurdle, and here we've got uh, the big talking horse from Ireland, Pont Alexandra. Uh, very, very short price uh, here at five to four. Uh, everyone thinks it's going to win, but I believe that this top one here, uh, Nicky Henderson's Chatterbox, unbeaten so far in three runs, has already beaten my tent or yours and looks definitely in need of uh, the step up to this two mile five furlongs and I think that Chatterbox is definitely the uh, the best bet of the day so nine to one each way I can't see this one finishing out of the frame and looks really excellent value you can actually get tens and elevens in a place so uh, you should be okay to get ten to one Chatterbox let's take a look at the next Okay, so next up we've got the Royal and Sun Alliance chase, and uh, as we all know, Dynast was the favourite for this, but uh, David Piper's uh, decided to go for the juice and with that one. He's still actually uh, represented here by Goulains, who's been highly progressive and, uh, and does look one of the leading players in this race. Um, I think this is going to be a watching race uh, for, for me. Um, there are a, a couple in here that look really, really interesting. Um, but the one that I'm, I'm going to watch and the one that I think um, could play a part, a, a very, very big price, is this one here, Vintage Star. has been highly consistent um, all season. Um, has been running very, very well, was a decent hurdler, um, comes here on a mark of 137. So if we look at the, uh, you know, some of the others here, a lot of these are in the mid 140. So probably has a good 10 pounds to find to, to get involved. But he's definitely a stayer over this trip. Now I'm thinking that um, here, the Royal and Sun Alliance, it is traditionally a very, very fast run race. It usually turns into a real, real stayers event. And I think that Vintage Star looks uh, a little bit interesting just at this price. It's a no bet race for me, but I just wanted to point out Vintage Star as, uh, as a potential fly in the ointment in the RSA. Let's take a look at the next. Okay, so the next race is the Queen Mother Champion Chase, and of course it's one that we've all been looking forward to. Um, it's going to be a fascinating race to watch. Um, it'll be interesting to see uh, you know, what goes off in front. It's probably likely to be Sanctuaire, um, but it also could be Tom George's uh, Mal de Biev, which has been supplemented for the race. But of course, all the attention is on number five, Sprinter Sacra. Uh, unbeaten, an absolute machine, and I think a horse that everybody already loves and everybody wants to see win. So really looking forward to this. I'm hoping Sprinter Sacra wins and wins very, very well indeed. And I'm sure that's the case for a lot of people. So that's the uh, the Queen Mother Champion Chase. Let's move on to the next race. And it's uh, it's one of the big handicap hurdles of the week. 
Okay, so it's the Coral Cup. It's two mile five furlongs, and we've got a field here of 28 runners. So it's going to be very, very difficult to uh, to find the winner. But I've got two here that uh, that I like against the field. Uh, the first one is number six, Black Thunder. It's Paul Nichols' horse. Was a very, very progressive novice uh, hurdler and has come out and run really, really well this season. Now, what you'll find with Black Thunder is that it does seem to get detached uh, and is actually been has been ridden uh, with quite a lot of restraint. Now, I think that if they were to uh, ride the horse just a little bit nearer the pace, even mid-division in this big field, it's going to be uh, one that is definitely going to be picking up um, at the latter part of the race. It's on a mark of 145, which is uh, the same as last time when it fi finished 5th of 18 in the Lanzarote um, at Kempton. Run a really, really solid race, and I think at 25 to 1, Black Thunder is excellent value here and uh, and I think this will definitely give you a run for your money. Also make sure that you're you're backing uh, you know quarter of the odds first five so make sure to look for a bookmaker uh, that that's paying you know five places. We've got another selection in this we're coming right down the bottom and this is Michael Smith's Orsippus. Has only had the one run this season, uh, ran up against Peddler's Cross, so the form, uh, I think the horse, was, if I remember correctly, the horse was beaten uh, somewhere around about six lengths, which is a really, really good performance. Orsippus has excellent Cheltenham form. Uh, 2010, uh, finished third in a large field handicap, and in 2011, also third in a very large field handicap at Cheltenham. Uh, we'll love the trip, we'll love the ground. The only thing I would say about Orsippus, and one thing that I think you will see, is that this one will be being scrubbed along, uh, you know, probably four or five out. It's, it's basically the horse's running style, that is how it runs, but it will be staying on when others have cried enough. So our second selection is Orsippus, and that's available at 33 to 1, and that's another each way bet. So that's the, uh, that's the Coral, let's take a look now at the, uh, at the Fred Winter. Okay, so the uh, the Fred Winter is the next race, and again, it's another big field handicap, 24 runners, uh, juvenile hurdlers, and again, we've got a couple of selections in this race. Um, basically, we're we're looking at the first one, which is uh, which is Venetia Williams Hall, Zamdi Man. Now, this one's had three runs in novice company. Um, basically, was really highly tried on the first of those, and finished fifth of sixth in uh, a graded race and then went on to, uh, to finish runner-up on its next two starts. Now, it was second last time out uh, behind uh, only Oars and Forces, which is basically uh, a really, really very, very decent novice. Uh, Zamdi Man does have a bit to find uh, with one of the ones at the top of the handicap, and that's Ruakana. Uh, but looks really, really fairly treated on this introduction to Handicap Company, just off this mark of 128. And, uh, and Zandy Man is one of our selections here, and that's going to be 25 to 1. Uh, it's 25 to 1 each way currently. And our second selection in this race is one down the bottom, and this is Three Kingdoms, one of John, John Ferguson's horses. Now, he does have others in the race, and this is definitely the least fancied of John Ferguson's runners. Uh, but again, it's another one that's had three runs in novice company, has been fancied on each occasion, uh, but not quite uh, not quite performed as expected. Now, you know, coming into handicap company off this mark of 126 looks very interesting. Was previously a, uh, a decent handicapper on the flat in Ireland, Achieve ratings in the high 70s and, and low 80s. And I think that Free Kingdoms uh, looks really, really excellent value. 80 to 1 with Skybet, but the general price, uh, um, you know, I'll have to advise is 66 to 1. Uh, that's available with, with a number of bookmakers. So there you go, guys. There's the tips for day two of the Cheltenham Festival. Um, I'm not going to go through the bumper. I've not taken a look at that race. Uh, but we've got uh, Chatterbox at 10 to 1 each way in the uh, Neptune. We've got Black Thunder and Orsippus in the Coral Cup, and we've got Zamdi Man and Free Kingdoms 
in the Fred Winter. So good luck today. Let's hope we get another return and, uh, and I wish you well for the, uh, the rest of the week as well. I'll be back with tomorrow's selections. Cheers now.